welcome into Cross My Heart Ministry and happy summer. Whether you grow your own garden produce or whether you have fruit trees in your backyard or whether you go to the farmer's market and, and buy and purchase all of those delicious flavors and colors and textures of summer, I hope that you are savoring every bite. There's nothing like a fresh homegrown tomato, nothing like a cucumber or a green pepper picked right out of the garden. And then we move on to the fruits and that's what our topic is today. Today I'm bringing you a recipe for fresh cherry pie. Nothing sweeter, nothing more delicious, and when you really want to make someone feel special, that's what you serve up, cherry pie. Now I did buy these cherries at the grocery store because they were there and they were on sale and I just couldn't resist. And I got to tell you, it's a whole lot easier to bake a cherry pie by opening up the can and dumping it, and that's really good and delicious, and I have friends that have different flavors that they love and, and special varieties and brands that, that they're that they are partial to but I when I make a cherry pie I just love to do fresh cherries and so I have my cherries all washed and pitted and cut up and ready to go and I have the stained fingers to prove that if you're doing a cherry pie you got to have a cherry pitter I bought this from William Sonoma a few years ago and it has been a lifesaver when I make a cherry pie or I cut up cherries or what have you. So this is this is a tool you have to have if you're going to do this. Now the reason I was motivated to bake a cherry pie today is I am about to go out of town, go to pack my suitcase and head west to Oklahoma to Enid to the Air Force Base there. I'm so proud of my nephew Drew. He is being promoted to major in the Air Force and so that little sweet nephew of mine that grew up in Ripley, West Virginia, where I was also born, has always wanted to fly planes. And his parents gave him flying lessons as a teenager, and he never looked back. He went on through the ROTC program at West Virginia University. He got to go to flight school with the Air Force. In fact, I went over when he got his wings and graduated to Enid a few years ago. After that, he's done lots of things, had lots of deployments. He is just a precious young man that we are so proud of. So I'm going to go over to celebrate that special day this weekend when he gets promoted. And when I was thinking, well, what can I take him? What can I bless him with? And more than any other gift, I thought, I'll just make him a cherry pie because we're all going to be there. One more dessert to celebrate the sweetness of that. And there's, there's just nothing like cherries or any other flavor of summer just to celebrate how good God is to us in providing all these tastes and textures and flavors. So today, let's jump right in and get with it to make our cherry pie. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I've got the recipe all ready for you and you can find the link below to, to follow the PDF in the show notes and print your very own copy of that. The first thing is to preheat the oven to 425, so I'm going to get that done. 425 and get that started. Next, I always start with a pie crust that is purchased. I used to make my own homemade pie crust and I would even make those with my big mixer and freeze them so I could just thaw one, but it just, as life has gotten forward and I go a longer time between making a pie or even making a quiche and so having even that in the freezer just wasn't something I wanted to do. So I am going to dash over to the refrigerator and grab my pie crust. You can buy the store brand at your grocery store. I went to Aldi and got their store brand pie crust and I think it is just fine. So this comes with two crusts when I am having the family in or in a few weeks when I'm hosting my leaders for Bible study planning meeting and I make quiche. I'll buy several of these and I'll use one to make a quiche or if you make a pie that doesn't need a double crust. But since it comes with two and for my cherry pie today, I am making a double crust. This is going to be super duper easy. So I'm going to unroll this and they've added, this is a little different than when I used to get it because they've added the the baking paper inside. I didn't see that the last time I purchased these. I'm going to go ahead spray my pie pan with the non-stick cooking spray so that it doesn't stick. And then we're just gonna fit this inside like so. Let me move these things out of the way. I don't know if you can see, but you sort of get my pie crust unrolled here and it's just gonna fit right down in. It's just so easy. Oh, these fingernails with my 
cherry juice in them, I'm going to have to do some Googling and figure out what is suggested to take off that stain because it does not look pretty. And I've got a pretty dress to wear at the ceremony and I will not look very nice if anyone looks down and sees my cherry stain fingernails there. I always like to give my pie crust a little bit of a stab with my fork just to let it vent a little bit, so we'll do that. So there's that part. Get the pie crust box out of the way. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and mix together the flour and the sugar. That's kind of the base before we pop in the cherries. This recipe calls, first of all, for one third of a cup of flour. Might seem like an odd thing to go into the the mixture of the pie, but every pie that I have, I guess it just gives it a little, serves as a little thickening agent. So there's a third a cup of flour. We'll store this out of the way. And then we need one and a third cups of sugar. Now the cherries are already sweet and this is gonna give them that additional little sweetness. So grab the one cup out of there first. Go ahead and level that off. There's one cup. And then another third of a cup. This is so quick to go together. Here's, now we've got those two dry ingredients. I'm gonna give these a stir to sort of mix them together a little bit. And then we're ready to add in the cherries. Now the longest part of preparing, making a homemade cherry pie clearly is pitting the cherries. But I got on the phone with a friend today to take care of some Bible study business and I killed two birds with one stone. That's Laura's favorite thing. When I have a job and I need to make a phone call, I usually try to think about if it's a job that I can do and talk at the same time, I try to multitask, just that kind of a girl. Okay, so we mix our cherries in here and oh, they just look and they taste so delicious. I've been enjoying these this week. A few with my breakfast or a little treat with some Greek yogurt. Mix a little sweetener in there and add those cherries and it is delicious. So we're just going to stir this to combine it. I wanted to be sure that I did a clear bowl so that you could sort of see what this looks like. Still see some mixture down there on the bottom. Just going to try to get this completely mixed in. It, it will get juicy, but it's, it sort of absorbs all of the dry ingredients and doesn't, it does not have a real liquidy texture at this point. So that's all mixed. Kind of see what that looks like. And then the next thing we add, and this is really the secret ingredient that makes it absolutely wonderful, almond extract. This is what makes the cherry pie just smell and taste so wonderful. And I like to use a full teaspoon. I've looked at different recipes that call for maybe a half or something like that, but I like to put in a full teaspoon of almond flavoring. So there we've got that in there, and now we're ready to go. We just pour it into the pan. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna go ahead and spoon this in. I got out a spatula so I can get every savory bit of goodness out of my pan here. So let me do that. Scrape my spoon a little bit here too. So, smells so good. And when this starts to bake and it is finished, your mouth is going to be absolutely watering. Just eat it by itself or if you want to do the added vanilla ice cream to go with it, nothing like cherry pie and ice cream. I'm going to have a very light, healthy dinner the night that we eat this so that I can indulge in my cherry pie. Okay, so we've got the cherry mixture in here and the only thing we're going to do next is to take a couple tablespoons of butter and sort of cut that into little pats and put that on top. So let me dash over to my refrigerator, grab my butter, and then demonstrate for you how I do that. So I have about two tablespoons already measured out here. I just wanted to keep it in the refrigerator until I was ready for it. So we're just gonna cut this up into very small little pats and sort of dot it across the top of the pie crust. So I'm gonna cut it so, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these in half and then in half again and just make little teeny pats to sprinkle across the top just to add more flavor and more calories, more delicious goodness to our cherry pie.
and then we'll be ready to put the top on. I have just not taken the time to do the lattice. I know that makes it look really pretty, but I'm just going to put a crust on top and cut the slits in it and call that good because I have lots of things on my list today to complete before I'm ready to head out of town. So we're just gonna sort of dot this around, try to have it all even so that we don't have more butter in one place than another. I'll try to hold it up and show you what that looks like before I put the top onto the crust. I have um, a little topper for an apple pie that cuts little apple shapes out of the top. So sometimes if I'm making an apple pie, I'll do that. And after I bought the cherries, I thought, well, maybe I should have opted for an apple pie because this is an American military man I'm honoring and we always think of as American as apple pie, but I don't know, friends, I think that a cherry pie is pretty American as well. And I know the, the men and the ladies in my family, when I, take the trouble to make a cherry pie. They always seem to appreciate it and there's some poor soul getting the last piece and almost licking the plate clean. So there we go. I've got the butter all patted on there. And so I've got a little cherry that's got one little side of that pie piece of the crust that's sort of dipping down. So I'm gonna pull my crust up a little bit here so that I can put the other on top and kind of crimp it. So this is a deep, a deeper dish pie that I chose. So the crust didn't really have a lot extending out. So I'm just sort of gonna do that a little bit. Probably should have pulled that up just a little bit before I dumped everything in, but it's gonna be okay. Now, ready to open up the other half. And now that my fingers are greasy from the butter, it's a little bit more difficult to open up the plastic. Let's get this out. And again, this little, this makes it so easy to unroll and it doesn't stick together. Sometimes the, when the pie crust comes, it's kind of sticking together and it's a little bit of a challenge. So this makes it super easy. So I'm just gonna put that on top. I'm gonna sort of go around and crimp the sides a little bit, fold that under just like so. Now what I like to do when I make this pie or any pie is to treat it to a little egg wash on top. And that just gives a little bit of a gloss. I'm not sure it adds much to the flavor, but it just makes it look sort of shiny and pretty and gives it sort of a, a homemade look to it. And then I sprinkle it with a little bit of sugar just to make it look even more homemade and delicious. I, I learned that trick from my friend Brenda, who is the best probably cook and baker I know. and um, we were doing a big event for some women's ministry a few years ago and she bought all these pies for us and agreed to bake them from Brahms. And if you're going to do, buy a pie, Brahms has some really good ones if you have a Brahms in your area. But when she she sort of did that little egg wash trick and it just gave it such a little homemade flair and, and look to it. So I've always remembered that and that's what I always do with my pies. So I've got it all sealed around. I'm going to take my finger and my sort of my knuckle there of my finger and just go around and sort of crimp it a little bit just to give it a fun little look. Since I'm not doing the lattice or anything special, I'll just do this. And then I'm just gonna slit it. You need to do that because as this starts baking and those juices come up, it needs to vent a little bit and you'll, you'll know it's finished when you start to see uh, the, the crust will turn light golden brown and you'll start to see the juices sort of bubble up in there. Uh, check your oven, it might bake faster or slower than mine, but this takes about 35 to 40 minutes to complete, maybe a tad less, tad more. So usually when I'm trying a new recipe, I'll set it for about five minutes less and then check it. So there's what it looks like now, and if you can see that, and I'm going to go ahead and get some of this butter off. I'm gonna go ahead and cut. Well, let's go ahead and add the egg wash first and then I'll cut my slits. Oh, oven's preheated just in time. So we have my one egg here. I grabbed a fork. What did I do with it that I used? There it is. So just sort of whip up that egg a little bit. We won't use nearly all of it, but we'll use this to sort of paint if you have a pastry brush, you'll have to get one if you do this. But just sort of paint this on here. Some people do just an egg white. I just do the whole egg. 
and paint it on there very thin, get it washed around. And I do it even on the top lightly here. Doesn't take long, but it just gives it that little shiny homemade look to it. Okay, and then I'm gonna get my fingers into my sugar bowl and just sort of sprinkle a little bit of sugar on top like so. Okay, now let's cut some slits here. I know there are probably much prettier ways to do this. I usually do just kind of long ones like that. And then I'll do kind of some shorter ones on the angle. And we will call that good. I'm gonna check the edges. I have a little pie uh, protector here that I can put on top. Let me grab that out. I think it's right here. And that kind of protects it. If I, if I put it on too soon, it seems to mash down the edges. So I'm gonna let it bake for a few minutes and then check it and maybe add this on top to keep those little crimped edges from getting overly browned. So we're gonna pick, stick this in the oven, be back in 35 minutes and it will be finished. I'll try to take a picture that we can superimpose on the video so you can see what it looks like. But I'm gonna stick this in the oven for now. But just as I wrap up, I just wanna say I hope you're having a tremendously blessed summer. I hope that as you enjoy all the fresh flavors from the out of doors, that, that you realize that even food and all its colors and flavors and textures point to the creativity of our very great God. If, if food was just about fuel for our bodies, he could have just given us one bland flavor. But we see the creativity of God and his great provision and great love for us in giving us so many different flavors and textures and colors to savor and enjoy. And there's nothing like a dinner plate in the summertime to see all those beautiful colors. So wherever you are, I hope you're enjoying the bounty of God's creation. I hope that even though it's summer, you're staying in the word of God. Come back on Fridays to hear our summer devotionals from our, our Write the Word bookmark. We've been so blessed to have some women, some guest lectures, unpacking some truth for us. And I appreciate that as I've been working on some writing projects, but we'll be starting soon with our fall Bible study in the book of 2 Corinthians. And so look for that to come up. If you live in Northwest Arkansas, would love for you to join us in person. If you work or if you live outside of the area, you can reach out to me. We'll have a, an email in the show notes as well about how you can get a copy of our study guide and then study right along with us. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with us for Cross My Heart Ministry. I'm Laurie McFarlane.